little bit of a step up on both sides right here. of our distancing. Just keep that in mind. And uh, again, I just want to thank you for coming by. We're, we're not we're not a gathering. We're having a protest. We're protesting aging. <laughs> but thank you very much for coming. The Bible says the death Oh, I should read it. I'm getting mixed up already. Precious, yeah. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. Keep that in mind and let that be a comfort to you. We grieve and we mourn, but remember, precious in the sight of the Lord death of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can be together to celebrate this solemn time together. We thank you for the memory of our mother, our grandmother, our aunt, our friends. And we just pray that you would be honored as we hear stories and memories of Apha and that we would honor her name as well. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's sure not as windy as it was <laughs> previous few days. So we will just go right into our program. And first off, um, Mr. Cooper will be leading us in a hymn. What a day that will be. And you're welcome to join in. <laughs> for the song are on the back of the bulletin. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears.
now we'll just have the tributes and you can follow one after the other. Andrea and Carla will be coming. And then Sean and Carol Price. And then Mary Dell and Peggy will be sharing <laughs> mom's testimony. And And then we'll have some Sunday school songs from days gone by. And that'll be with Greg. So you just come along and share together. We're protesting aging, but we have to wear our glasses. <laughs> was one of a kind, even her name. There has never been another Atha, and she wore it proudly on her license plate. Her home was always open, full of family and friends. Sunday dinners were a must, and if more people showed up, she would just peel a few more potatoes and add more water to the soup. The counter was always covered with homemade buns or cinnamon buns that were cooling, pie and ice cream for dessert, or her famous chocolate cake. If nothing was baked, just some lettuce leaves with sugar sprinkled on top of it. <laughs> Grandma was never one to throw anything out. If you left a few bites on your plate, you might find her eating it. One of us remembers seeing her grab a banana to avoid wasting leftover ketchup on a plate. <laughs> Expiry dates were a falsehood. We saw evidence of that by looking at her salad dressing bottles, condiment containers, or ripe fruit. Frugal to the core, not ashamed of it one bit, but she was the most generous of all. She was always giving to different missions. Just ask Uncle John how many um, donations she had coming out of her account. A home to Sean, Chelsea, and Brad. Grandma loved having those grandkids so close by and enjoyed feeding them their after school snacks. Anytime a baby was born in Alberta, Saskatchewan, or Texas, Grandma would be sure to be there to help and hold those babies. She was a busy grandma. Once the grandkids started coming, they kept coming quickly, 14 in all. And it wasn't long after that, the great grandkids started coming. Her heart and her arms were full for many, many years. Some of our fondest memories growing up were taking over the basement that was full of beds for a mass cousin sleepover. Three floors down, the giggles could not be heard. Christmases were always a blast, full of laughter, skits, and songs that we made up. We think we got that from our grandma, who wrote lots of songs, including We Know We Are the Bloods, which she made us sing at the blood reunion. So now we would like to honor her in writing that song by having Tamara and Megan and Chelsea, if you could please come forward and sing it for us. <laughs> Famous for the heartsick frown, which we all take pride in when people accuse us of looking unhappy. <laughs> she was always a teacher, but was sure that we also knew that she was a farmer. She loved to share memories of her childhood and of when she went to normal school. She loved to dance to the music of the dance hall. But her true but her true love was gospel music. She played it in her home and on the piano for hours with grandpa tapping his toes and humming along. The church and the dance halls are echoing with her music. She also loved to read, to do needlepoint, crosswords, and teach kids about the Bible. She wasn't just our grandma and a devoted Sunday school teacher. She was a superstar in this town and touched so many lives. 
Bridge Club hosted in her home and her time at the lodge were always peppered with the gospel. Everyone knew her as a woman of faith and a pillar in the community. Nobody would question it, and her day-to-day -day life was winsome, mostly because she understood grace and what the blood of Jesus was really about, being humble in her faith. Her door was always open. Literally, it was never locked. Those of us that went to Bible school took our turns bringing our friends over to invade the dining room table, TV room, and laundry room. As grandkids, we never felt that we were in the way or that grandma was stressed when we were there. Christmases, holidays, and summers spent with grandma and grandpa were always so special. At Christmas, we looked forward to having all the girls and then all the boys open their gifts at the same time, knowing that we would all get the same thing. <laughs> The highlight though was when we were watching her open her Christmas gift from grandpa. She would jump up and plant a big kiss on him after opening yet another piece of jewelry. <laughs> she was a stylish lady. She loved shoes, coats, and sparkly things. Every grandkid has their own special memory of grandma. From the smell of fresh baked buns, getting her nails, or sorry, getting her hands in the dough to help her make them painting her nails, eating puff wheat squares and hamburger soup, picking and shelling peas from her garden, and the ever famous picture wall of the grandkids in the kitchen. For many of us, checking the updates to the wall was the first thing we did when we arrived. Her heart was so open to us and loved us so well. As we got married, she embraced all the new members to her family. We knew that she was praying for each one of us and the families that we were building. We know it really meant a lot to Tracy to have Grandma close. <laughs> when she moved away <laughs> and followed in her footsteps to marry a farmer and make guest in her home. She loved to see the world with Grandpa and so many pictures to show for it. Something I think she passed on to many of her grand and great grandchildren. It gives us solace to know that she is with Larry and her boy Brad and is now dancing in heaven with Grandpa, her lifelong love. Thank you, Grandma. Because of you, the Heartsuck cousins are lifelong friends and have a bond stronger than most. Thank you for the family and legacy you have left us. It is our most treasured gift. funny feeling on Saturday morning. All I could think of was Grandma Etha being greeted with a crooked smile that was familiar. There are hundreds of people who have been lucky enough to have Grandma in their life. I feel like I was the luckiest. Growing up, she made me feel right at home in their house. It was like a second home for all of us, all the cousins. Provided a warm, welcome environment that anyone would be comfortable in. Even my friends loved going there with me. Grandma was a person of routine, hard work, organization, clean living. I think that's what made life in their house so comfortable. I can still smell the homemade buns, taste her homemade hamburger soup, and the cookies with the three smarties. It's no more than three smarties. Her, her love of the land and the community was evident to me by the way she knew so much history of the area around here. If we were out driving, she could tell you who owned, who used to own every quarter section along the road from here to the farm and anywhere else. She knew the geography of North America too, it always astounded me. All the traveling her and grandpa did over the years. She could remember the every highway number and town any area that I could talk about. We spent a lot of time talking about traveling through Saskatchewan and Alberta especially. 
one time I told her we'd driven to Texas and she told me all the secondary highways, the best way to get there, all the numbers. And she was right. My grandma always had lots of farming stories to tell about the old farm at Tennant, the ranch down south of Lacadena, and of course the farm north of Snipe Lake. <coughs> A few funny things come to mind about grandma too. Can't be all doom and gloom today. After all, living to 93 isn't sad, is it? If anything, it's impressive. One could even say it's a happy ending. Grandma had her quirks. Let's just say she could be thrifty. <laughs> she got pretty ticked off at me when I teased her about that big garbage bag full of coupons in the closet. I can't remember who said what where, but it seems to me Grandma and Grandpa were at her house at the farm checking out a renovation project that Brad was working on in the kitchen. And Brad said, Fixing this house is just like putting lipstick on an old lady. <laughs> and grandma's jaw hit the ground and said, I'm an old lady! And stormed out. <laughs> now, to tell any good stories about Grandma, you have to mention Grandpa Gerald, too. And one day I was sitting at their kitchen drinking coffee with, with Grandma Atha, and Grandpa came down the stairs. He's just getting, just woke up buttoning up a shirt and grandma said you aren't wearing that old shirt today and he turned around walked back up the stairs <laughs> goes in his room comes out with a different shirt on and sits down and he says i don't know how you single guys do it you don't know what to wear you don't know what to eat you don't know how to act you really need to get married <laughs> but behind all that wit and sarcasm was the truth he had a deep respect for his wife his rock his dependable life partner she was a perfect mother, an awesome grandma, a really cool great grandma too, Grandma Ethan. When I went to the church today, and everybody was wearing black. I could uh, just hear my granddaughter Harper say, why does everybody wear black to a funeral? It's supposed to be a celebration, wear color. And Ada liked color, so that's why I'm wearing color instead of black. Well, Ada, I always said that you were my oldest, not meaning your age, but truly, she was my oldest and dearest friend. lunchtime and sit and visit with them. So that's how I got to be such close friends with her was right from school days. Aitha always called me her fifth yeah. daughter, but Gerald would put his foot down and say, she's yours, but she's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd laugh. I have so many good memories. Like the time she called me in the morning to tell me we were going to Moose Lake Camp. Our kids were at their summer job and at a different camp or whatever. Ian was busy working, digging, uh, uh, putting in the water system uh, east of town. So he wasn't home all day. He said, come on. So I got busy, packed up, left Ian a note. He said, see you on Sunday. So, uh, and I think that was Aitha's last time coming and spending a week at Moose Lake. She just loved it up there. Then off to Moose Lake we went. What a fun week we had. Aitha got to spend time with her grandkids and great grandkids. And I got to spend time with Cliff and Mary Dell. And like I said, that was the last time Aitha went camping at Moose Lake. Aitha was my mentor in so many ways. She helped me with sewing projects, cutting up rhubarb, potting peas, making applesauce. She was my other Torah helping me whenever I needed extra help. She was always there to lend a helping hand. One day, we were busy butchering chickens. <coughs> Ava said, Gerald and I'll come out and help you. They came out 
at the end of the day, Gerald said, well, it was a good day. Just don't ask us to come next year. <laughs> <laughs> Ava and I made many, many trips together. The Swift Current many times and to Moose Jaw. She went to visit one of her schoolmates and I got to see Shauna. The many trips we made to Kindersley, buying a dress for Sean's wedding. It was such a hoot. She went into the dress store and she said, um, you know, I wear a size 12. So she was looking at all the size 12 outfits. And the clerk was very nice and she said, let's look over at this section. So she pulled out a dress that was a little bit bigger than size 12 and she stomped her foot. I've never worn that size in all my life. <laughs> Anyhow, she ended up buying the most beautiful dress. Um, another time, Eighth and I went to Rosetown. Ian said, while you're in Rosetown, why don't you check out the new cars? That's the wrong thing to say to Eighth and me. As I came home in a new bright red car, Aetha was so excited about our purchase. <laughs> Ian was not impressed. The car was back the next day. Aetha <laughs> um, helped me do wallpapering in one of the bedrooms. What a hoot. We stepped in the water tray, spilled the water, filled it up again. And we were going along and I said, Aetha, the wallpaper's going a little crooked here. We better, because it had a pattern, of course. And it's going a little crooked. She said, it's a bedroom. They come here to sleep, not to check the wallpaper. <laughs> so we just kept on wallpapering. <laughs> uh, and the wallpaper is still on the room today. I'm surprised Malcolm hasn't taken off the pink hearts and the flowers yet. It's tough, they're hard to remove. <laughs> Aetha and Gerald also held Ian up with great respect. He was so, they could always count on Ian to be, be Gerald's right hand. Sorry. Okay. Aetha was also my mentor with the walk, with my walk with the Lord. She got me involved in teaching Sunday school for about 13 or 14 years, teaching Sunday school, and going to ladies' Bible study. And then I started going to sing song with uh, Elaine and Aetha, and a few other ladies joined us too. Um, whenever I would get upset about something, Aetha would always help me see the other side in a positive way. And of course, our coffee breaks, Sunday dinner's out. I always felt at home with Aetha and Gerald, and I could just knock and walk in the door. I usually um, would just knock and say, it's just me, just me, because I didn't want them to jump up and go answer the door. And she said, don't ever say, just me, because you are very important to us. So I come in the house and say, Eyes here, eyes here, let the banners fly. No, let the, what, how does it go now? Whatever. The bells ring out and the banners fly. Let the bells ring, that's right. So, uh, Gerald would say, it was better when she'd say, just me. <laughs> um, I never ever heard Aetha say a negative word about anyone or anything. She was always such an encourager and saw the good in others. Aetha loved the Lord with all her heart. She'd sit at the piano and sing to the Lord. She never needed an excuse to sing and praise God. This is sweet. Going to the lodge won't be the same anymore. With mom gone and Aetha. Who's going to sit at that piano? Who's going to sit in that rocking chair that nobody dared to sit in? <laughs> but she'd only let me when I went in for sing song. Carol, let your chair. <laughs> um, I will really miss seeing her sitting and playing the piano 
and sitting in her favorite rocking chair. But knowing that she and Gerald are together in heaven today, eating at that banquet table with her Lord and Savior, who could ask for anything more? So bye for now, Asa. You have been a true friend. I will miss you, and I love you. Shall we see you again? So bye for now. so nice to see everybody here today. I can't help but think that mom really would have liked this. She didn't mind doing things a little bit different. And I think she loved the outdoors and she loved the good Sunday school picnics. So um, mom really did love to get together. And uh, when Mary Dell and I went to prepare mom's eulogy, Mary Dell had a box with some of mom's effects. And we found a testimony that mom had written years ago. So this is an account of Ava's life through her eyes. And these are some excerpts from her testimony that she had prepared. So without further ado, here's Ava's story, according to Ava. The Lord has done so much for me, so the least I can do is return thanks to him in a public confession of all his goodness to me. I've been asked to put my history in a pennant history book, so I thought I would just read what I wrote at that time. I arrived in the world in 1926 at Empress Alberta, a part of the sticks. Not by myself, a twin also came. I was named Atha May, he became Alvin James. He was healthy and strong and I a bit weak, but thrived on goat's milk and cod liver oil. With their sisters, Burl and Orla, our parents, Pearl and Blake, to Isham we moved. We were just babes. Then on to Pennant thereafter, we all took our grades. We always played horse before we played house. We off ran away and the switch we did feel all the way home with our mom at our heels. To Valentine's school, we went for a decade, walked half a mile, we two in our grade. We got our book learning and lots of other instruction. I took piano lessons and later was part of the Pennant Orchestra, which was dear to my heart. I normaled in Moose Jaw, and next, later on, I taught in Espen in 1948. It was there that I met my mate, Gerald Hartsick, decided to change my name, a farmer's wife, and that I became. A family of five, Mary Dell, Susan, Joanne, Peggy, and our son, John. God has been good to us all, filled our lives with love, and removed all our fears. With Christ as our savior, the future looks bright. As we walk in his footsteps, he shows us what's right. The years spent at Pennant, I'll never forget. I'll always be thankful for friends that I've met and for mom and dad and their loving ways, a heritage to cherish all of my days. So that gives you a brief rundown of my life. I remember the depression years well, the dirty thirties when the clouds of dust would roll across the land and we had to light the lamps at noon school would be called off. I remember, oh, and also I remember getting my first bought and dress when I was 14. I got it from my sister for Christmas. I remember having only one doll and my brother broke the head off. <laughs> that was for you, JD. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> I was never very strong as a child. I had rheumatic fever when I was eight years old and missed six months of school. I remember how my toes ached and how hard it was to move off the chair because of the pain. My mother took very good care of me. I was never allowed to be in a Christmas concert or take part in a field day. And I had to be in bed before 8.30 every night. Are you listening, great grandchildren? <laughs> I hated being weak and I longed to do what the other kids could do. After I was saved, I discovered a scripture in Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 
I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's my memory verse. <laughs> As most of you know, there are times when it's not easy being a mother. Tiredness often plagues us when the work is still only half done. But I thank and praise them for the strength and good health I've enjoyed all my adult years. I didn't come to know the Lord till after I was married. We used to come to Eston in my childhood years. I had grandparents and lots of cousins and aunts and uncles. It was always a favorite place to spend summer holidays. Once in a while, we'd go to Eston Assembly of God, and I loved the music, but not too much of the preaching. As I look back, I can see how God was the one wooing me by his Holy Spirit, but I did not realize it. We didn't get to church or Sunday school as children as we lived too far out in the country. When I had a chance, I liked to be in church. I belonged to the United Church Choir and Pennant in high school years. I often went to church in, in Moose Jaw when I was there. However, I didn't realize I was lost and that I was in need of a savior. After I was married and blessed with three little girls, I used to wonder how could I ever raise them to protect them from the evils of this world. I didn't know that Christ was the answer. One day, Gerald said, when the girls get a little older, I'll take them to church in Eston. And I thought, that'll be the day. <laughs> because at the time, we were very much a part of the world. We lived to dance, loved it. I hope we'd never be too old to dance. We had great fun with our neighbors and we were when we were with young families, enjoying parties and bridge parties and dances. But the next day, I hated how it made me feel. And then I would wonder about the future of my three little girls. And the day came, and Gerald announced, I'm going to take the girls to Sunday school in town. Oh, I thought, great. That's one thing I won't have to do. But after a few Sundays, he wanted me to come too. He didn't see why I wouldn't come, because I always was ready to go anywhere else. First one out the door. Well... We began to sit under the Sunday School Ministry of Brother Marshall, and then my husband rededicated his life to the Lord, and we started listening to back to the Bible, et cetera, and, et cetera, and he wouldn't go to dances or parties. Oh, I was devastated. I didn't think a worse thing could happen because I knew if a person went that way, they didn't very well get over it. It wasn't long before I was in a struggle with the Holy Spirit, so convicted, but so unwilling to give in. I didn't want to give up my old life and all my friends and the fun we were having, also afraid of what people would think. I was almost sick before I gave in and said, yes, Lord, you win. I give up my ways. I give you my life to you. I can testify that the Lord found me. I didn't find him. Little by little, he changed my way of thinking and my desires. I soon lost my desire for worldly things and found real joy in the fellowship of God's people. I hungered for more of God's word. Brother McLean made the Bible come alive. It's a mystery to me why God chose us, but I'm so thankful he did. So the least we can do is live for him. A short time later, we were baptized in water in 1959 and filled with the Holy Spirit. It made Jesus so real and so near. Then came the opportunity for service. Jimmy Hunter asked me to be the superintendent of the junior department, and I've been involved in Sunday school ever since. Later, some of us felt the need for a pioneer or for a girls club, so we explored different Christian programs and decided on the Pioneer Girls. I think it's important to provide Christian fellowship for our kids. My advice to anyone would be find your ministry in the family of God and serve him wholeheartedly. Christ will strengthen you as he promised. We've been more than blessed in our large family and we enjoy their company so much. We're not just related, we're all best friends and I thank God for each one. I believe we are saved for a purpose in serving him and I found deep satisfaction and joy in endeavoring to live for him. I confess that many times I've failed him and denied him but he has never failed me. I thank him for the many answered prayers and his marvelous grace in the lives of each one of my family. All we have to do is commit them to the Lord and watch him do the work. These words give us such insight into our mother's heart and her walk with the Lord. She lived a life of balance and moderation. In their later years, mom and dad did rediscover their love for the dancing. 
and I just love to picture them together today dancing with the Lord. Thank you, Aetha. <laughs> now we're going to be uh, led in a few Sunday school songs by Mr. Cooper. And after that, if you would like to come to the mic and share some brief memory of Grandma, I'll invite you to do that. I've only got one Sunday school song, but it's long. <laughs> and it's repetitive. We got all day. So you all have to sing it with me. It's called, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And I'm sure that Aetha taught me this song. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in Blessed Redeemer, way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer, way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus. anyone like to come and share a memory or an experience with grandma? Up. I don't need to be the only one that's not on the program, but I'm just, uh, I'm just so thankful, you know, because um, she made such a legacy, you know, uh, it's close to Mother's Day and the day we bury our mother. But I've never been more confident that she isn't where she's supposed to be, you know? It's like the, the blessed assurance of where she is, you know? And around Mother's Day, they always would uh, praise the mothers in church and 
give the fathers a lecture. <laughs> but it's close to Mother's Day and uh, quite often preachers, they'll talk about how Paul says to uh, Timothy about, uh, I'm convinced about, you know, to Timothy, he says, I can see the same spirit that's in your grandmother and now was in your mother and now is in you. And, uh, you know, grandma was so passionate about evangelism. Like, I remember when I was between Bible school, I took Bible school in two separate settings, but when I was between the two, she did not give me the choice, but I had to teach pioneer clubs <laughs> because she was so passionate about, you know, not just the story of who Jesus is or the gospel, the good news, but she had the spirit inside her. You know what I mean? The spirit of comfort. The spirit that convicts you of truth. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lived in her. It lived in our mothers because of her. And it lives in all of us. And uh, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will raise her from the dead. And it's because of, you know, the ground that she prepared for not only our family, but for thousands of people. Like, if you think, like, just I'll use our family as an example. Like, Cliff is hanging out with Mary Dell, and he goes to camp. And, and just that small one ministry and how it has just exploded for evangelism. And that was... You know, just because of the, the spirit that was in her and she just, she had to, to get it out and she was an evangelist. And, uh, you know, I'm just so, nobody looks back over a life that grandma lived and be like, she wasted that. Like this, this life that, that the, the principles and the path that she was so passionate about, like it, Often I would sit in her living room and she wanted to talk about the, the Bible or it was pretty much her only topic. And, and it's because the spirit lives within her and I'm just so thankful that, that that lives within us too. And there was families that are, would be jealous of you know what she gave us. And her deciding to be like, yo, you know what, Gerald? And like quite often she would tell me old stories. Uh, and often it was her testimony or, or why she, she believes what she believes or Billy Graham and what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> With her great big thick biographies of all kinds of missionaries. But it was just because she was so passionate about producing a crop, you know, and she liked to buy land and she liked to take in the rent and she liked to do all that kind of stuff and she liked to wear fur coats it was because she you know she understood the abundance of, of god she understood the abundance of what it means to follow the spirit and uh i'm just so thankful and the same spirit that lives in her can live in us and can you imagine we live to be as old as her and if we follow kind of what she laid out for us you know we'd have no regrets we could leave our families with a complete confidence and be like you know this is the path and it is a narrow path she was passionate about that too you know there's a hundred different ways to the wrong destination but th there is a particular spirit a particular spirit lived within her. A particular person came and lived and died. And she wants you guys, she wanted all of us to know that particular spirit. And uh, I just love her so much for it. And, uh, you know, she loved that house too. <laughs> that house that... Uh, I was able to uh, live in after we moved away from Glen and I lived there for a bit. But I remember one time when uh, Uncle Russ first bought his house in uh, in Mackenzie, is it? McEwen. And she, I remember her talking. She's like, Who do you think has the nicest house? And I'm like, You know, I think I really like Uncle Russ's house. 
Well, she didn't like that. So. <laughs> she was sure that she had the nicest house. <laughs> but you know, she she had such a welcoming house, and like uh, as we all know, we could be just. Um, it's it's really sad because you know she brought so much of us together, like Gerald and Nathan, and like I'm just so happy to be like. My best friends are my cousins. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was because of her, her legacy and grandpa's legacy and and just like doing the right things for so long. Thank you, Clayton. Anyone else would like to come? favorite in the last few years was who's in my house <laughs> okay if there's no one else would like to come I'll call on Reverend Cooper again I've been called all sorts of things lately <laughs> Reverend that's Cooper, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> well, it is an honor for me to be able to be here today and share in the memory and the life of Ava Hartsook. Obviously, many of you know that uh, I spent my elementary years in Eston growing up. And uh, yes, Ava was my Sunday school teacher. <laughs> When we were back at the church, we found the stop and let me tell you signs. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Anyways, we're not going to do that one too. But uh, many, many hours spent uh, learning the Word of God from her. Uh, Sean and I actually we we hung out a little bit when we were when we were kids, and sometimes after church, uh, I I would get to hang out with the Hartsucks. And maybe we'd go to the Great West Cafe and Grandma and Grandpa would join. We probably ate chicken balls. I don't know if, I'm not gonna say anything else about that. And from time to time, instead of going back out to the farm, we would uh, head to Grandma and Grandpa Hartzik's house. And we obviously would eat cookies and probably watch cartoons. We didn't get into too much trouble. We saved that for the farm. But uh, I have fond memories of Aetha. And I always remember her kindness. In these later years since moving back to Eston, I've had the privilege of leading lodge service uh, at the lodge and being a part there. And uh, usually I'd bring my guitar and Aetha would hop on the piano and we would sing some gospel songs together. For lodge service she always liked doing that more recently uh, I, I said you know what Aetha don't worry you can have a break I'll just play and uh, I think it was right before Christmas maybe right after Christmas I went in and did some songs and she's well I went in first and I said oh are we gonna do some singing yes of course that's why I, that's why I go to the lodge to sing I, I do a little devotion also we sang some songs and I did my little devotional. Then I sang a couple more songs and I was putting my guitar away. She said, well, aren't we going to sing? <laughs> I said, hey, we just finished singing. Do you want me to sing another song? Yeah, let's sing another song. So we sang another song. You had to be on your toes around her. But as I was preparing for today, the the girls have given me some scriptures to to kind of base my little sermon off of and I looked at the scriptures and I was like those are kind of random <laughs> um, but as I read them I noticed something first Chronicles 28 uh, verse 8 says so now with God as our witness and in the sight of all of Israel, the Lord's assembly, I give you this charge. 
Be careful to obey all of the commands of the Lord your God, so that you may continue to possess this good land and leave it to your children as a permanent inheritance. And Psalm 16 was another verse that they had asked me to, another chapter they had asked me to read, and I just picked out a couple of verses in it. Verses 5 and 6 of Psalm 16 says, Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land that you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. Did you notice that? The word inheritance is mentioned in both of those passages. Ethan knew God's word. She knew it well from teaching all of those kids for years and years and years, all their memory verses. She knew that an inheritance is more than the stuff that you leave behind. Inheritance is something that's not tangible. Something that, even as Clayton was talking about, the lessons that we teach our kids and the, and the grandkids, it's how we treat each person like they are a child of God. It is living a life that reflects Christ to all of those around you. Atha has left an, an inheritance. The way that she was a mother, a grandmother, an auntie, a friend, a Sunday school teacher. She left a legacy, as Clayton said. She left an inheritance to each one of those kids that she taught in Sunday school. And I'm part of that. I got this from Aetha in 1986. You can hire me to cry funerals. <laughs> 1986, I was six years old. She probably has handed, handed out thousands of Gideon's Bible. And I've held on to it for 34 years for some strange reason. Maybe I'm a hoarder. <laughs> but the lessons that she taught me and the songs that we sing still live on in my heart. What inheritance has Aether left you? How are you honoring her life by passing that deposit that she left in your life onto the people who you have influence with every single day, to the important people in your life? This morning, I, I always I roll out of bed and open up the Bible app on my phone because that's what we do now. We don't open our Bibles. And it always gives you a verse of the day. And the verse of the day today was Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Work willingly or whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master your servant is Christ. Well, maybe uh, those verses weren't random after all. She knew better than us that the inheritance of God is good. And she now is enjoying the riches of his kingdom, kingdom in heaven with the Lord. As we go from here today, think about the inheritance that she has left you deposits that she has put left in your life that will live on through you your children and your children's children thank you Aetha for depositing in my life you will always be remembered join me as we pray Heavenly Father, you are a God of all 
mercies who care for all of your people in the time of sorrow. You care for them with an everlasting love. You are a God who consoles us and comforts us in our loss, in the death of this loved one. God, you are a God of peace, who promised to pour your perfect peace on the hearts of your children who are going through pain and suffering, the loss that a precious loved one brings. Thank you for the life that Ava lived. And that maybe it wasn't always easy. Her confidence was in you. And we thank you for the legacy that she left to those closest to her and to those of us who have been impacted, who had the privilege of being impacted through her by you. We thank you that she is now with you experiencing a place where there's no more sorrow, no more pain. Be with us here as we try and make sense of life and death. And the, though we know that death comes to us all, it still does not take away the pain of losing someone we love. Comfort the family in this time. Be their strength. Be their peace. And be their joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some of us have shared through these passing years the wonderful companionship and fellowship with Ava Hartzer. We treasure the many special memories that come to us in these moments. Her faithful life and friendship will continue the radiance and testimony in our lives, in our church, and in our community. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom Aetha loved and served, we commit her body to rest, knowing that her spirit is with the Lord in his heavenly house. In doing so, we rest our hearts in fresh confidence upon this sure and certain hope of the resurrection of life through the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Following the benediction, the family has chosen to lay flowers on the grave. I know the great grandkids are handing out flowers ask that you would, after I'm done reading the benediction, you can come and give your final respects and lay your flower on the casket and say your final goodbyes. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good for doing his will that he may work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom glory forever and ever. Amen.
get up. Very special nephew, JD, Elvin's son, has come to spread ashes that are from his father, of course. And Atha and Elvin were twins. It was a very meaningful time. JD, please come. Childhood together. I don't know. Uh, how bad it's made so far. <laughs> but uh, I think they, they really have a special place in each other's hearts. I want to thank you both. If anyone knew Alvin, he was a great storyteller. <laughs> Atha maybe could write stories, but he could sure tell them. As we close, today we'll sing one more song. Because he lives. Because he lives, I can face
while Clayton was speaking, the Spirit of the Lord just really spoke to me. Years ago, Gerald had this itch, and he scratched, and he bled, and it really bothered Asa. Well, Clayton has such a bad rash, and he itches, and he bleeds, and I just feel that the Lord really wants to heal you, Clayton. And with all the cousins around, Asa would be so excited if you got healed today of that terrible itch. So I would like some of the cousins to come and pray with Clayton. Oh, this is so sweet. You know, if Grandma was here, she would miss this part. And she'd be turning the hamburger soup on. She always skipped out <laughs> at the end. Uh, <laughs> you know what? It, it is. We can all be healed because of uh, because of the life that Grandma lived. She's, she preached healing. Um, that silly song that she ran about the bloods and stuff. It was because she was passionate about the blood of Jesus. And that song that they always sang, we know it was for the blood. It was for the blood, and it is by His blood that you were healed. And uh, she was an amazing woman. I don't know why we're praying for me and my hit and my skin during this time, but but I think Grandma would be okay with that. But. And Father God, you are the great healer. You shed your blood to heal all our diseases, all our sicknesses, Father God. And Lord, we are just asking that you come down and touch Clayton from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet and heal him of this terrible itch that he's got, Father God. You are the great healer. And Asa would be right here, and so would Gerald saying, be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in the name of Jesus. And walk in glory and hold your head up high because God is going to work with you, Clayton. And he is going to heal you from the inside out. In Jesus' name. Thanks, everyone. Uh, when uh, I was the first one into the viewing, when uh, I just walked right in, and she looked so good, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I just, I could almost hear her talk, say hi, and I said, hi, Grandma. And then I noticed that in the top corner of the coffin, there was still the price tag. <laughs> And uh, it was just so typical, you know, we get all get the same Christmas gift and they pretty much all have the price tag. So I took that price tag off at the viewing and I put it here because it's just so appropriate. Maybe that's a sign that Clayton's going to pay for it. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming, making this a special day. I think every grandchild is here, right? Every grandchild is here, which is really something. That speaks volumes about grandma and her life. Can we get a picture of all the grandkids? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, Go stand by Cliff. Okay, all the grandkids are supposed to come up here. We'll take a picture. Um, oh, you did? All the grandkids? Okay, never mind. All this is uh, 10 minutes ago wasn't on the program. <laughs> <laughs> they already did. Come over here, grandkids.